a lot of great people telling me that I was meant to be here on this earth, I moved beyond being scared. I realized from my mother's words that scared is just false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. And when we think about environmental literacy, I'm of the opinion that in many cases, we haven't been as successful and taken that quantum leap because of the fear that's not always by us, but by others that don't quite know what it is, how to do it, and how it will pay off in the end. I went on to go to elementary school, and I had the privilege there to integrate an elementary school in my hometown. And while the Little Rock Nine had been escorted in 1957, by the time I was third grade, my school in my small town still had not integrated. And so they found one little girl that was willing to have the mother was willing to send her. But it was here that I remember walking the streets. And as I walked the street to my school, all of the people in the community came out to wave me on, to encourage me. And while it was somewhat fearful at the age of, in the third grade, it was somewhat frightening, I realize now as I look back over it, that my mother could have been stuck and thought that this must be something bad about this because nobody else will send their child here to this school. But it was here that I learned a lot about the outdoors too because my science teacher, and I celebrate teachers out there because he took me a step further and introduced me to the outdoors. But more importantly, he taught me about being impeccable with my word as we've learned in the four agreement. Don't take it personal. Don't make assumptions and always do my best. And it was this teacher that influenced me to continue my education and move on. And as I think about environmental literacy in our system, when I think about the great work that the Environmental Literacy Council has done, looking with policymakers, economists, architects, teachers, administrators, and others, that they have helped us by doing their best in finding cross-disciplinary resources for teachers to use to broaden their understanding. They provided, and they do provide, tools for those that maybe they know how to teach, but don't have the current knowledge in environmental literacy, knowing that this needs to be an integral part of the K through 12 curriculum. He helped us do that because he took us outdoors and he allowed us to do some outdoor learning. And it was this teacher that I'll have to tell you Later in life, when it was time to go to the university, I had no clue what I would study because I had seen no one that did the kind of work that I was really interested in doing. I had no role models at all. So I got to the campus of the University of Arkansas, not sure what I was going to do. And I decided when it was time to declare my major to study biology, had nothing more to do than the fact that I had a crush on that teacher. <laughs> so it was here that I started studying biology at the University of Arkansas. It was here that one day as I was fishing, because I did what Dr. Steve Covey talks about, the late Dr. Covey, when he talks about the seven habits of highly effective people. And Dr. Covey says, put first things first. It's all about prioritizing. And that was important, and I did that. And so I did what I liked best in the morning. I went fishing. <laughs> it was in the afternoon that I went to class. One morning I was fishing, and one of the ladies from the dormitory came down, and she said, there's a guy from the US Fish and Wildlife Service there. 
and he's recruiting people to come to work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as an intern. And he said, she said, I think you'd be a great candidate, but go back to your room and take a shower. <laughs> so I went back to the room, took a shower, went down and met this guy that was passionate about the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. He was a great ambassador for the program. Hannibal Bolton convinced me, but he was also kind of like a sleazy used car salesperson. <laughs> Not a good used car salesperson like mine, but the sleazy one. He led me to believe the job was in Arkansas. The job was in Wisconsin. So I called him up and I said, isn't it cold up there in Wisconsin? I had never been south or north of Little Rock. And he said, like a sleazy used car salesperson, mm. I'll call you back and let you know what I can do for you. So he calls me back and he says to me, it is cold, of course it's cold up there, but we're gonna do something special for you. We're gonna throw in some free clothes. <laughs> I later discovered they were uniforms. <laughs> and everyone got those free clothes. But again, to overcome being stuck, stalled, and scared, I decided to take the job and move to Wisconsin with all intentions of going south. My next job, once I graduated, was in Green Bay, Wisconsin. <laughs> As we think about environmental literacy and what we need to do to take that quantum leap, we have to think about sometimes you have to go up to get back down. So it was here in Green Bay that I had a chance to work with some great people in the ecological services offices. It was here that I realized what I think is important when we think about schools and greening, healthy living conditions, technology development, the economic future, and our relationship with natural areas. They're all shaped by environmental actions. 